Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to operate and set up your Worcester Life 8000 combination boiler. I'll show you how to adjust your central heating temperature to make your house and your boiler as efficient as possible. Also, how to adjust your hot water temperature and the best setting of to set that at. How to reset your boiler if you get a fault code in a display. At some point in the future, your boiler is likely to stop working with a low pressure fault. And of course, I'm going to show you how you go about topping your boiler up to raise the pressure up and get your boiler back up and running again. And of course, I'll also show you what that eco button does and how it affects the operation of the boiler. I wanted to quickly let you know I've made lots of other help videos and you'll find those links in the description below, like how you balance your central heating system to make it more efficient, the most common reason for a radiator to stop working and how you get it running again, and also videos on programmers like the Honeywell T3R. Again, you'll find a lot of those links in the description below. And one last thing before I get on with this video, we're all going for an energy crisis right now and we're all trying to reduce our gas bills. And I want to let you know I've made a video on 10 things that you can do to your central heating system to make it more efficient and reduce that gas bill. And you'll find that in the link above here and down in the description. So here's our display on our Worcester boiler. And you can see at the moment the display is off so you can't see anything. If you want to see the display, you need to press one of the buttons. These two buttons here will adjust our temperatures up and down. They're also used to reset the boiler and also show you the pressure within the boiler. We then have the back button, then we have an OK button and our eco button, which is the hot water preheat. We've got the button to adjust our central heating temperature and the button to adjust our hot water temperature. So let's just press the OK button to see what the display says. And you can see at the moment it says 28.6 degrees C. And that's just the temperature that the boiler is at now. We've also got a picture of a tap for our hot water. Then there's a picture of a radiator for our central heating. We can also see it says eco in the display, indicating eco is turned on. Or in other words, hot water preheat is turned off. Now, if you want to adjust the temperature for your central heating, you press the button just here and then the display will start flashing and indicating the temperature that it is set to right now. So you can see it says 55 degrees. If we want to adjust our radiator temperature, we need to press one of these two buttons here. So let's just press the button again to make some changes to our central heating radiators. Now you can see I can press the button several times and keep adjusting the temperature up or we can just hold it in. Now the highest temperature we can set this boiler to is 88 degrees. Now that is really, really hot and you wouldn't really want to set your boiler right up there because that's really inefficient. I mean, it's nearly at boiling point. So let's just press the down arrow and see how low we can set this temperature to. So you can see it's going all the way down and it's going to keep going down until we get to 30 degrees. And there we are, 30 degrees is now on the display. So that would just make your central heating just lukewarm. Now the ideal kind of temperature you want to be setting your central heating to is somewhere between 50 and 65 degrees. So I can then push the up arrow and adjust that temperature up. Now just remember this is not the temperature that your house gets to, that's the job of your room thermostat. But the temperature that your radiators get to, which in turn will affect how hot your house gets. So the lower we can keep this setting, the more efficiently our boiler will run. But in the middle of the winter, when the weather is really cold, our house may not be hot enough. So then we may need to adjust this temperature up just to make our radiators hotter, which will also make our house hotter. Also, the higher the temperature we set the central heating to, the faster the house will heat up. But like I said, that will also make the boiler less efficient. So if you want to try and reduce your gas bill, then you want to try and keep the central heating temperature as low as possible. Now to adjust the temperature of our hot water, all we need to do is press the button that's a picture of a tap on. You can then see the set temperature, which is 50 degrees. The tap icon is also in the display. So we know we're adjusting our hot water. And then we use the plus and minus buttons to adjust that temperature. So let's adjust our hot water temperature. So I'll press the tap again. I can then press the up arrow and I can take this temperature right up to 60 degrees. Now that's really, really hot water. And in general, you don't need it set that high. But let's try turning it down and see how low we can make the hot water. So we take it all the way down and you can see there, I can take it right down to 35 degrees. Now that's just going to be lukewarm water. Now the point about your hot water is you don't want to set it any higher than you need it. 
because there's absolutely no point in heating the hot water up to a really high temperature just to cool it down at the tap with cold water. You're then just wasting gas. You're added unnecessary usage to your boiler, which may add a scale buildup in your plate heat exchanger, resulting in a plate heat exchanger needing to be replaced. And of course, if you want to be green, you don't want to be burning unnecessary gas. So what temperature should you be setting your hot water to? Well, I found right about 48 to 50 degrees seems to be a pretty good temperature. Now, if you can set that temperature a little lower, then that's obviously going to reduce the amount of gas used, which will reduce your gas bill. So set the water to where you find comfortable. Now, there are a couple of occasions where you might want or need to set your hot water a little higher. One is if you have a mixer shower, that's a shower that mixes your hot water and your cold water. You may find that even if you turn the shower right up to its hottest temperature, it's still not quite hot enough. And in that case, you'll then need to set your hot water a little higher. Another reason why you might want your hot water just that bit hotter is if you like having really hot baths and you want to top your bath up with some hot water, then you may find that you want to set that temperature higher so the hot water you're topping your bath up is really nice and hot. Now that's absolutely fine if you need to do that. Some of my customers just turn the temperature up on their boiler when they want to have a hot bath and then they turn it back down again when they've finished. And that's a really sensible way to use your boiler. We can use the back button to take us back to the normal display. And there we go. Now moving on to the eco button. As you can see at the moment, eco is in the display, but if I press the button, eco goes away. That now means we've turned preheat on. If we press the button again, then eco comes back in the display, turning preheat off. And there you go. You can now see eco in the display. So what does eco function do? Well, this function is purely for your hot water. And what it does is it keeps the boiler pre-warmed, hence the word preheat. So it keeps the boiler hot all the time so that when you turn your hot tap on, it doesn't take very long for the water to come out of the tap because the boiler is pre-warmed. But this does mean that the boiler will be keeping itself warm all through the day and through the night when you're not using it, just so that when you turn a hot tap on, it doesn't take very long for the water to come out of the tap. Obviously, that's adding extra wear to your boiler and, of course, increasing your gas bill. Now, this function may be useful if you're on a water meter because then you wouldn't need to run the tap for as long before the hot water comes out of the tap. You also may want to consider using it if your boiler is in the loft or in the outhouse. But just bear in mind, if your boiler is in the loft, and in this case is in the garage, then the boiler is going to cool down faster and so preheat is going to be on even more. Now, I always recommend to have preheat turned off, which on this boiler, of course, is having the eco setting turned on. And that will stop the boiler from preheating. Now let's just take a quick look at the boiler in operation. So if I turn the hot tap on, we then see the hot tap will start flashing, indicating that we are using the hot water. And then the flame's gonna come on and the temperature will start to rise on the front of the boiler. There we are, there's a picture of the flame. And then we see the temperature start rising as it heats up our hot water. And there you go, so you can see the temperature rising, heating up our hot water. And then if I turn the hot tap off again, we'll see the flame will go out and then the boiler will continue to run the pump for about a minute to let the boiler cool down a bit. If we turn our central heating on, the central heating symbol will start flashing. And again, we've got the flame in the display and the temperature will rise as it heats up your central heating. And then when we turn off the heating, the flame's going to go away and then the symbol will stop flashing. Now, just a quick note on the way a combination boiler works. If you have your heating on and then you turn a hot tap on, the hot tap will override the central heating. So your central heating will then be off whenever you are using your hot water. Because combination boilers only heat one thing at a time and a hot water always has priority. So a little thought may be needed if you have a large family or you have someone who likes to take a really long showers because your house might get a little chilly whilst they're taking that nice hot shower. Now, if we want to know how much pressure is in our boiler, if we press one of these arrows just here, the up one or the down one, hold it for three seconds, the pressure will then be displayed on the screen. If you find the pressure is a little low, so that would be below one bar, 
You should then top the boiler back up to round about one to one and a half bar. And I'll show you how we go about topping up the boiler in just a bit. We can then just press the back arrow to take us back to the home screen. Before I show you how to reset and top up your boiler, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful at all, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on that subscribe if you like the video, click on the bell if you want to receive a notification and of course share the video with your friends. A big thank you to everyone who has thanked me by getting me a cup of coffee and leaving a donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Oh, and don't forget to check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. If your boiler develops a fault, then you'll get a flashing warning triangle and then a number underneath it. The number corresponds to the fault which the boiler has detected and your boiler manual will tell you exactly what the fault means. But for the most part, as a homeowner, all you can do is to reset the boiler. And to do that, you press and you hold both the up and down arrows for around six seconds and you wait for the display to change and you see those three dotted lines and then you release the two buttons. Now your boiler is reset and you hope that the fault code does not come back again. Now you can keep resetting your boiler, but if the fault code keeps coming back, then you're going to need to call a gas registered engineer to come and look at your boiler. You'll find a link to the UK gas register in the description below. Now with combination boilers and system boilers, you need to maintain the pressure within the system. When the pressure drops down too low, the display will start flashing at you, telling you that the pressure is getting low in your boiler and you want to top it up. And when it gets even lower again, it will then stop working and then you'll definitely have to top it up. Now I'm just draining some water off this boiler to show you how this pressure works. You can see the boiler has just come up with a fault code just there, but now the boiler is showing LOPR, which stands for low pressure and also L 0.6 bar. So at 0.6 of a bar in pressure, the display will start flashing at you like this, telling you that your pressure is getting low and you want to top the boiler back up again. When the pressure drops down to 0.2 of a bar, the warning triangle is going to come up in the display and your boiler is going to stop working and you won't be able to get it to work again until you top it back up again. And of course, I'll show you how to top your boiler up right now. So to top our boiler back up again, we need to go underneath our boiler and we need to remove that plastic panel on the bottom so we can get to the topping up valve. Now on the side of the panel, you'll see there's a little clip here and there's also one on the other side just here. And what we need to do is push those two in and then the panel will come off. So here we go, it just push that clip there in and this one here, push them both in and then the panel just drops down. We can now get to the filling valve, which is this little blue lever right here. To top the boiler up, all we do is just pull down on this little blue handle like that. You just pull it down, it's sprung loaded, so it will close straight away as soon as you release it. So you can see that my boiler now has zero pressure in it. So now I'm gonna to top the boiler up. So what I need to do, like I said, is just pull this handle down. When you do this, you're gonna hear some noise as the water goes into the boiler. And then we're going to keep an eye on that pressure and make sure we don't put too much water in it. And you can see the pressure is rapidly rising. I'm still holding that handle down. It's sprung loaded, so it's just going to spring back and close again. And there we are. Now we're at 0 0.7 of a bar, 0 0.9 of a bar. I'm going to keep on taking it up and any second it's going to say stop on the display. There you go. Stop. So stop filling your boiler up when you get to this point. So just release the blue handle and that's it. That's your boiler top back up again and it should start working again now. You don't need to worry about the stop in the display in a short while. It will go back to its normal display and the screen will turn off. Now, if you're very unlucky, when you pull that little handle down and nothing happens and the boiler does not top itself back up. Now, what has happened there is a check valve inside this little part here has become stuck. And I'm afraid there's not a lot you can do. But if you have come across this problem, then I have made a separate video on how you go about fixing that problem. I'll leave a link in the description. Now we just need to replace the panel on the bottom and it's pretty straightforward. You just line it up in its position and just push it straight up and listen for the two clips, making a little click as they go into position. 
and that's it so that's how you operate your Worcester boiler I'm not going to go into the filter right now if you want to know more about that I'll be making a separate video but I have already made videos for the MagnaClean and that filter is virtually the same as this one so that's about it then so if you want to watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill you can click on the video just here and of course you can click on subscribe you can click on the bell give me a thumbs up share it with your friends and it's always my toolbox friend bye for now and I'll see you next time